Okay, so this is the lecture covering the material in 10.1, 10.2, 10.3 on ellipses, hyperbolas, and parabolas. First thing we want to talk about are ellipses. Here we can see the standard equation for an ellipse uh, is x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. So in this equation, it looks all kinds of complicated, but it's really not. Uh, it's very important to notice that there are uh, x and y, which are in every equation. h and k are important because uh, the point hk is our center. A and B are going to be uh, distances that we travel from the center to determine our ellipse. Now remember what an ellipse is. A circle is the same distance all the way around, right? We have a radius and it is the same all the way around. An ellipse has different distances on the X and the Y. It can be either tall like this first one or it can be fat like this second one. Now this de is determined by what the major axis is. So the major axis is going to be dictating uh, whether it's tall or fat. So notice that it has more area on the Y axis here it's got less on the X than it does on the Y. So the Y axis is the major axis here. So the Y is the major when you have an ellipse that's tall. Okay. Now a fat one has more on the X. So an X has a major or there's a, a, the X is the major axis on a fat ellipse. Okay. So this is very important. Now, how do you tell whether the graph is of a fat axis? I'm sorry, not a fat axis. I've got to get that out of my head. A fat ellipse or a tall ellipse. Well, here in this equation, if A is bigger, then X is the major. If B is bigger, then Y is the major. Okay, whichever one has the bigger value dictates uh, the major axis. So... The major axis is whichever one has the highest number, a squared or b squared. So if a squared is bigger, x is the major axis. If b squared is bigger, then y is the major axis. Okay? So, for example, if we had, say, uh, x minus 2 squared over 64 plus y plus 1 squared over uh, 4. Which one is bigger? Is A squared or B squared bigger? Well, obviously A squared is bigger, therefore the X is the major axis and it's a fat ellipse. Okay? Now, what if we change that and say, say this is 16 and this is 144. Now all of a sudden the Y has the bigger value, therefore now it's going to be the Y is the major axis. It's going to be a tall ellipse, not a fat ellipse. Okay? Now, there's another value that we need to talk about. I do not need to calibrate my pen. So there's another value that we want to talk about called the foci. There are two foci for each ellipse. Foci is the plural of the word focus. So uh, one focus to foci. Okay? So each ellipse has two foci. And these values are important because in a uh, in an ellipse say we've got this ellipse. If I have two points here and I have a string tied to them. This string, if I went all the way around, I could keep that string taut 
and it would draw out this uh, ellipse. That's what the foci are. They're the two points that would generate this ellipse with one length of string, basically. Okay? So, how do I find that? Well, I know normally that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but in this case, I'm going to say that c squared is equal to the difference between a squared and b squared, okay? So a squared minus b squared or b squared minus a squared, depending on which one is bigger. So here with this equation down here, with this one, it would be b squared minus a squared that we used to find c, since b is bigger than a. Uh, or if it were like the first one, you would use a. So for this one, we would do uh, c squared equals 144 minus 16 c squared equals uh, 4 14 is 8 3 128 so c equals square root of 128 which is you know whatever it is so that's going to give you the foci now A and B, if this is the center, A and B are dictated by this, okay? If this is going to be X major, okay? So A is out here. This is A. This is negative A. So this is B and this is negative b. So this is going to be c and this is going to be negative c. So whatever the center is, I have to add a and add c to get to the these points. I have to add b and subtract b to get to these points. If this were not located at 0, if this weren't at 0, if it were, you know, over here, and the ellipse was like this, you know, whatever, then I would have to do a little bit more. Uh, but we'll look at this problem and find all of these values, okay? So we have C, our x plus 2 squared over 64 plus y plus 3 squared over 16 equals 1. So the first thing we have to do is say, uh, what are... What's our center? H, K. So what is H? So remember, in our equation, these have X minus H and, and minus K, which means that in any equation, I need to change the signs. So if this is plus 2, I'm going to have negative 2. And if this is plus 3, I'm going to have minus 3. So our center is at negative 2, negative 3. Okay. Now, what is a? Well, a squared, let's look at a squared, is 64. Therefore, a equals 8. b squared equals 16. Therefore, b equals 4. You see, that's squared, and that's squared. So, to get the a and b, I have to take the square root. So, what A and B are, are the distance from the center. So, since A, in this case, since A is bigger than B, the major axis is X. So, that means A is going to go along the X. So, we're going to go 8 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units on X. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units on X. B is 4, so we're going to do... One, two, three, four units on Y since it's not the major axis. It would be the minor axis. Okay? So this gives us the outer points for our ellipse. So we can draw our ellipse. something like that. I guess we could bring it out a little bit. There we go. 
All right. Now we need to look at our foci. So I know that c squared is going to be a squared minus b squared, so 64 minus 16, which is going to be 14 minus 6 is 8, 48, so c equals square root of 48. So what is the square root of 48? Square root 6.9. So from our center, we need to go along the major axis, 6.9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.9. Okay? So notice they should be, you know, the same distance away from the center, and they would be our foci. Okay? If we wanted to find those actual values, how would we do it? How would we find each one of these values? Well, we can look at the graph, of course, that we just did, but we know that the center is HK. So let's say center is HK. Our outer vertices are our major vertices are going to be the center H plus uh, A H minus A and the K doesn't change for this one. So our minor vertices are going to be our H doesn't change, but our k now is plus b and minus b. And then our foci, notice that the k doesn't change, but the x now is uh, h plus c and h minus c k. So we can just plug in our values for H, A, K, you know, all the values that we know, and get those out. So center is at H, K, so that is at negative 2, negative 3. So our major vertices are at H plus A, so negative 2 plus 8 would be 6 negative 3 and um, negative 2 minus 8 so negative 10 negative 3 the minor are at H H is oops sorry negative 2 and then K plus B so negative 3 plus 4 is 1 and negative 2 uh, negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. And then the foci will be at H plus C. So H uh, is negative 2 plus 6.9 is 4.9. K is negative 3. And then H minus C. So negative 2 minus 6.9 would be negative 8.9, negative 3. So let's see if these points are true. Negative 2, negative 3, that gives me my center. Okay, that's right. 6, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. That is a major vertices, negative 10, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3. There's my other major vertices. Okay, minimum vertices, negative 2, 1. Negative 2, 1, yes. Negative 2, negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yes. And then 4.9, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4.9. 1, 2, 3, yes. 
negative 8.9, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, 8.9, 1, 2, 3. Yes. So that works for every one of those points. Good deal. Now we want to talk about hyperbolas. So hyperbolas are basically the same type of equation. Notice that the big difference is instead of adding, we subtract. And now instead of moving the A and B and talking about which one is bigger, uh, to determine the major and minor axis, it depends on whether X is first or Y is first. If X is first, X is the major axis. If Y is first, Y is the major axis. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a hyperbola? What do they look like? Well, a hyperbola on the X is the major axis looks like this. It's basically two parabolas uh, going in opposite directions. With Y as the major axis, it's like that. Okay? So, here, center, still H and K. Now A and B denote how far from the center we go out. And we're going to draw a box using our A and our B. Okay? So we go out along, A is always going to be along our major axis, and B is always going to be along the minor axis, and we create a box. And then, so if we go out, say this is, this is the, we create a box. Alright, and we draw this X is, that's just so horrible. I can't in good conscience leave that up there. So we, let me change the color so it stands out a little better. All right, so we draw lines through the corners of these boxes. And this box creates the asymptotes that these hyperbolas will approach. That line should actually come up like that more. Like that. That should look like that. Okay. So when we draw our box, it's going to create these asymptotes uh, that our hyperbola is going to approach. All right. So let's look at one and see how it works. So what is our center? Our center here is HK. So what is H? Change the sign, so that's going to be positive 2. K is negative 3. So 2, negative 3. Now what is A? A is, well, A squared is 4, therefore A is 2. B squared is 9, therefore B is 3. Now remember, A always goes along the major axis. What's the major axis here? Major axis is Y. Okay? So, major axis, we're going to go out 2. Minor axis is 3. We're going to go out 3. All right. Now we're going to draw a box. All right, so we've got our box. We're going to draw dotted lines through the corners of the box. All right, and then since Y is the major axis, I know it's going to be looking like this, so we're going to draw our parabola up here and another parabola 
down here, and like I said, two parabolas make a hyperbola. So the green is actually the graph of the hyperbola. The blue and the black are just the tools we use to get there. Okay? And that's all you've got to do. Now, parabolas. You've got x squared equals 4py or y squared equals 4px. Now, y equals negative p and x equals negative p are the directrices. And your foci are going to be 0p or p0 depending on which type of graph you've got. So with x squared, you've got the happy face and the frowny face depending on whether it's positive or negative. And with y squared, you've got a sideways smiley face or frowny face depending on whether it's positive or negative. So it's really important that you pay attention to whether you've got x squared or y squared and if it's positive or negative. Okay, so this is the kind of thing you need to pay attention to. Now, when we graph it, the directrix is a line. Y equals negative P. Oops. X equals negative P. The focus is the point, 0P or P0. The lattice rectum is a line, or it's a distance, I'm sorry. It's a distance, uh, but it's a, a, the, the distance of a line that goes through the focus and hits the parabola on either side. Okay, So let's look at all of that in play and see how it works out. So we've got an equation, y squared equals 16p. First thing we want to do is solve for p. So our standard equation is y squared equals 4px. Okay, So if this is true, then 4px equals 16x, which means that 4p has to be 16 divided by 4, p has to be 4, okay? So remember with y squared, then x equals negative p is a directrix. So x equals negative 4 is the directrix. So I'm going to draw that line, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, x equals negative 4, that's a line. Now the point, 0p, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, is the focus. And these are all in the standard form always centered at 0. Okay. Now remember what I said, the lattice rectum has a distance of 4p, absolute value of 4p, which would be the absolute value of 4 times 4, which is 16. And it goes through the uh, focus and touches the uh, parabola on both sides, which means half of it is on one side, half of it is on the other side. So if half of 16 is on one side, that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That means it has to look like that. So if that's the case, then that means that my parabola has to be looking like that. Because it has to go through the points being generated by the lattice rectum. Okay. Because all, to get that, really all you've got to do is plug in your uh, your value of the uh, focus. So if the the point x equals uh, four. because that's your focus. So 16 times 4 is what? 64. So y squared equals 64, then y has to be what? Plus or minus 8. So that tells you right away what that is. So that's where the lattice rectum comes from. So there's your graph. Now, the question is, 
if I give you some graphs, can you pick out, you know, if I give you an equation, can you tell me what that graph looks like? If I asked you to pick out, say I give you this, y squared equals 64x. And I give you three options. Is it this one, this one, this one, or this one? Okay. I'll call this A, B, C, or D. So, which one is it? Is it A, B, C, or D? Well, it's y squared, right? y squared. I know it has to be sideways right away. So, can't be that one. Can't be that one. Positive y squared opens to the right. Negative y squared opens to the left. This is positive y squared. got to be C, okay? Just by knowing the standard, you know, what a standard graph looks like, I should be able to pick out a, a uh, multiple choice question, okay? So that is it for our lecture on conics. I didn't even mention that word in here, but uh, let's make sure and get that in. Conics. from a cone. Not ice cream. But conics are fun because they help us do math. Yeah.